Fifteen years ago, the city of Austin had a problem. West downtown had been undergoing a decades-long transition into a residential district, but right in the middle of it all, on a piece of prime land, was a power plant that had been abandoned since the 1990s. The city and historic interest wanted to preserve the building, but the site was greatly underutilized. After considering proposals from various developers, city officials approved a redevelopment plan that would become one of the most successful adaptive reuse projects in the state. The Seaholm power plant was constructed in two phases beginning in the late 40s, and for nearly 10 years afterwards, was Austin's sole source of electric power. The city only had 130,000 residents back then. The boiler inside ran originally on oil and later on natural gas, heating water taken in from Town Lake. The water turned steam was used to power the turbines and generators, then discharged into Shoal Creek where it flowed back into Town Lake. The most recognizable component of the plant was the Art Deco turbine generator building, featuring a prominent concrete facade and distinct aluminum lettering. On the north side of the building were five smokestacks that were visible for miles. At the time the power plant was built, this part of Austin was mostly industrial. The architecturally significant but undesirable building and the complex around it didn't seem odd at the time. Austin was not yet an international destination, and even the beloved Town Lake was merely a scrappy reservoir. The Seaholm site wasn't just the main power plant building. North of it was a rail line spur providing access to the plant, and later to the east, a water treatment plant was built. There was also an addition to the power plant itself built in 1954. For years, this operated as an essential complex of city services located centrally in an expanding Austin. As Austin grew and the population sprawled outward, newer, larger plants were built. Eventually, the Seaholm plant became obsolete. Electricity production stopped here in 1989, and the facility was fully closed in 1996. The adjacent water treatment plant followed not long after. But despite the city's growing population and downtown's increasing popularity, the 7.8 acre site was left to sit. In the late 1990s, the city was planning on tearing it down. The land was largely overgrown by this point, and the buildings were beginning to show their age. The demolition plan, however, was scrapped as historic groups quickly opposed. In 2004, taking another angle, the city solicited proposals from developers. There were a few issues with constructing here. The city wanted to preserve the iconic turbine building, but much of the surrounding land was contaminated with oil and now banned PCBs. By this point, the transition of West Downtown was well underway. The warehouses that had once filled the neighborhood had either been torn down or converted into trendy stores, bars, and restaurants. Seaholm had become the missing piece. Seaholm Power LLC was formed as a consortium of investors interested in developing the Seaholm site. Their proposal was selected, and they reached a master development agreement with the city in 2008. Construction work began in 2013. It wasn't until 2015 that the first elements of the redevelopment opened. This included the turbine building, which had been converted into offices, as well as the completion of the Seaholm Residences Tower. North of the turbine building, a park was built, flanked by the residential tower on one side and on the other, a retail building anchored with the Trader Joe's. The park disguises an underground parking area that extends under much of the development. On the south edge of the park, against the back wall of the turbine generator building, much of the old equipment has been preserved. The smokestacks still rise high above the building, now capped and repainted. On the site of the water treatment plant next door, a new library was built, integrating Shoal Creek with the lake. But through all this transformation, the Seaholm couldn't entirely shake its original purpose. Although the city stopped generating power here long ago, the site was still crucial in Austin's infrastructure network as a substation. Today, just across the street from the Seaholm Residences Tower and the library is a very active substation. In true Austin form, it has been screened with decorative fencing and art. Although the Seaholm complex of old is nearly unrecognizable now, there is one piece of the site that remains abandoned and unused. Across Caesar Chavez Street from the front of the turbine generator building, on the edge of what is now called Ladybird Lake, lies the highly visible water intake structure. The city has not accepted a proposal for doing anything with this site, although ideas have included a boathouse and a restaurant. The transformation of the Seaholm power plant 
is indicative of a larger change that engulfed it. The power plant had turned into a relic as Austin had turned into a city, and today it stands as a proud example of how new and old can coexist and how buildings can transcend time and purpose. <laughs>